good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to another rep of League of Unlocked. Han Solo on today's epi. My name is Eric as we are reliving the greatness, the domination, the legacy, maybe even the dynasty that was T1 at Worlds 2023. We are counting down the 10 best plays just that T1 had. I mean, you could do a top 10 whole worlds, but let's be honest. Most of the best plays at this world championship were coming out of T1. So let's let's go 10 to 1, whether it's team plays, individual out plays, all five players had their moments where they were shining on the biggest international stage. In that 10 spot, it's a theme that we'll revisit a couple of times on here, and that's just Guma surviving ganks. We go back to the LNG series. He had a lot of Varus highlights, but this is the one where Tarzan comes with the gank and him and Kyria end up turning around this 2v3. The absolute confidence that this dude has. He's also a level down here on Gala, the level six versus the level seven. He ends up getting two E's off on the Varus, gets the shield out of Kyria to help him out as well, but Eating that snare and being at half health, while well, Gala's still at like 80% health, he takes the ulti and says, you know what, I like these odds. I got the shield from Kyria to turn this one around. This is just the embodiment that Kyria, or Kyria and Guma were challenging, channeling all tournament long, and that was just the outmost confidence in their abilities, absolutely proving, even with Ruler on the Rift, that these guys were the best bot lane at the entire Tourney. It didn't matter if it was on Varus, it didn't matter if it was on Zaya, Aphelios, any of these picks. And Kyria, I'm saying you got to get that Renata skin because there's going to be many more plays uh, that we are also highlighting out of him on that pick. I know he wanted the Lux one, but the Renata one is uh, pretty fair. Now we go to one of the many plays that were at the World Finals in that number nine spot. It's game one against Weibo. It's Guma again, surviving again. It's the Renata who's going to be a pop-off. But Guma, four guys trying to dive him. He pops the cleanse instantly, outruns the Maokai ulti. And look at that Renata ulti out of Kyria. Absolutely disgusting. Then he gets the Fates call to throw Kyria back in to save Guma from the Shy. Oh, it's just... It's just a full team diffy across the board as Zeus gets the kill on Shao at the end as well. This was, I mean, this is where the series started feeling like, man, T1 is just at a different level. But look at this ulti. How many of these take? One, two, three, and light has to flash. So three taken down by that ulti from Kyria and then also the flash out of light. Uh, multiple guys you can talk about playing at a high level in that one with both Kyria Kuma and, I mean, Zeus's Yone was an absolute treat to watch. But there were, there's too many, there's like two or three champions for every player on T1 that you could look at this event as a whole and say, man, I want a skin on that guy. Or man, he deserves a skin on that champion. I know again, none of them are Lux for Kyria, sorry to say. But uh, the Kalista that was so perma banned throughout the majority of this tournament, Guma, excuse me, more than anyone else showcased how absolutely insane that pick was in the laning phase and in team fights he actually wasn't useless he was completely taking over a, a lot of these fights so big shout out to guma for being able to play absolutely anything that was in the matter in the eight spot i know people will probably want this play a little bit higher because this is the i mean really it's the play that secured the world championship for T1. It is Zeus on the Aatrox. Game three versus Weibo. You guys all know what it was. Every streamer and their mom had a reaction to this. It's the one before that he survives. The reason I'm not putting this way higher on the list is, honestly, it's almost a 10K gold lead at 25 minutes and Aatrox is a little bit broken at this point, but that does not take away from the incredible uh, response from T1 to go and save your boy Zeus for him to hold on for so incredibly long against four members and eventually he's walking away with like 40% health. There's so much absolutely disgusting healing uh, coming out of that Aatrox, but we'll again sing and yell the praises of Zeus time and time again throughout this list and throughout especially 
I think the semifinals and the finals is truly when this dude absolutely leveled up against, well, that's the best time to do it because it was the very best competition, not just as a team, but 369 and the Shy, two of the very best right alongside Ben in terms of top laners at this World Championship event. I know there's so many more, to me at least, impressive individual and team plays out of T1 that happened at this event that felt like they warranted being ahead of this play, even though, again, I know this is the clincher for the World Championship title number four for T1, but they were so unbelievably, unbelievably ahead at this point and felt like the spirits of Weibo had kind of already been broken at this point, and it was just the final nail in the coffin to remove Weibo from that year's World Championship. Now we're moving up to the number seven spot where I alluded to the magic of the Renata Glask out of Kyria and none was more evident than game two against Weibo where it's, it's him and Guma really with the fancy feet here. This engage that looks good for Weibo down 4K at this point. Owner is chunked. You think he is not going to be able to fight here. There's the clean sidestep out of both Kyria and Guma. Then he flashes the suicidal Senna that gets tossed in and somehow a 400 hit point owner not only survives but is able to grab a double kill as we let's let's see that sidestep again oh mm. honestly the fact that he's walking back towards uh both light and weiwei there's no way that Xiaohu would have predicted that he would be uh, his movement would be going that way so absolutely clean movement out of kiria who then of course goes to turn around uh that entire team fight in the way of t1 but um that is another example. It just felt like no matter what Weibo was doing, even if they were finding decent engages, because again, they chunk out the majority of T1 uh, of their health bars in that lineup. They have they have the engage that looks good, but T1 just constantly turning around team fights that they had no business winning. There truly was just an aura around T1 when all five members, I, I think that was actually only a 4v4. It wasn't even all five members, but when... There was a team fight going down. T1, just an absolute masterclass. If you watch any of the team comms throughout the entire World Championship, even comparing it from how it, they were communicating in the LCK in the summer split, it was so calm, so cool, so collected. Some of the quietest comms that you will hear. How many times do we hear, I'm, I'm going to, throw North America under the bus, especially in the LCS. You've got three, four guys that are kind of yelling at the top of their lungs, different information, different things that they should be doing in these fights. T1, it's it's so it's so nice to listen to. It's almost soothing. It's like you're listening to meditative music because they are so in sync, so on point. Everyone is kind of talking about the same thing that's going on in a team fight. Nobody is yelling. Everyone is calm. I'm going to call that a, the faker effect that we had across the board for this squad. And hey, it led them to that fourth world championship. Moving on up onto this list. Number six is where we get to. I feel like this could have been higher if the original or intro play panned out a little bit better. We're talking about this absolutely nasty Lee Sin combo out of owner versus Weibo. But Jahu gets away. Faker has a charm flash that's a bit into the worlds of Narnia. But luckily, this play is redeemed by Mr. Zeus. On a 1v3 flank, he gets the clean Yone Alte uh, to blow up light immediately, get two kills, and then... Again, fights that look good for Weibo. The fact that Xiaohu was able to survive this engage in a 1v3 without even needing the Tom Kench ulti is miraculous. It should be the dragon going over to Weibo and things just looking clean. Uh, either they pop Zeus immediately, but nah, he's too, he's too damn good on that Yone. The, the combo of owner and Zeus here on this one. Absolute masterclass yet again from T1. And time and time again, it felt like um, those two players, owner and Zeus, probably also because as I've said before, they were the most heavily criticized members of T1 when they were slumping throughout multiple times, multiple weeks uh, throughout 2023. 
They were always the ones getting the blame. We're already ready to replace them for next year. How does T1 get better so they can win Worlds? Well, the answer is Owner and Zayus just play better because they're both world champion level players. And we saw that throughout this tournament. We saw that especially in those finals where much like you saw King and Zeka playing absolutely out of their minds, the best that they have ever played. That was what happened in finals, but we've seen both of these guys do it at other times as well, which is why the stock for both owner and Zeus uh, could probably never be higher after such dominant levels of performance. But that top side together, the synergy between the two is the main reason why uh, you were talking about them playing at such a high level. Top five action now and again. Guys, the fact that we have even... I didn't have to look very hard to find 10 plays of T1 popping off and obliterating the opposition. To get that in a single tournament, usually you're doing at least a full split or a full year, but that is just how bonkers the level of T1 was and how bonkers it always is to see Faker on Akali. Number five on this list is when he's grabbing that triple kill against Weibo. Game three. This is... This is higher than the Zeus Aatrox one before because the game was still undecided at this point. T1 was a little bit in control, but Faker hopping in. He's 1v4, jukes the Belveth knockup, gets the kill onto Xiao, who flashes out for the double and decides to go back in for the triple. He ends up going down, but it's a four for one in favor of T1, maybe a four for two. Now that's a bit of a whoopsie from uh, Crisp there, popping the Bard ulti onto T1. But that's another example, because I, I can never get away with highlighting Kyria too much. It feels like Crisp was first time in Bard, kind of because he was just to pick it away from Kyria. The fact that Bard is becoming such an important pick uh, in the series is a, another example of T1 completely defining the meta. But God, Faker, so clean. And, and, and I won't take any of this blasphemous, well, he's not mechanically up there with some of the other mid laners. He completely put all of those ideas and sentiments to bed in the matchup. To me, even before JDG, uh, before that series, what he did to scout in the LNG series is when you really woke up and said, okay, this is, this is fake. But why are we talking about this guy not being there mechanically? But obviously against JDG and obviously against Weibo, this dude is one of the top uh, mid laners in the world still. And, we were maybe going to do a all pro list after Worlds 2023, and then we realized, well, it's just all five T1 members. You can't make an argument against any of them being the best in their position when you're looking at the entire body of work for this tournament. Seeing Faker do it on Akali and Silas in the finals, some of these staple picks that we've seen him have so many iconic moments on, was an absolute treat felt poetic. It felt like it was justice being served to see him hoist that Summoner's Cup again. Number four on the list, it wasn't the highest stakes game. It's the least high stakes game in this entire list. But you gotta be mentioning Curious Bard. This is why Crisp was taking it away from him in those finals. And the LCS finally gets to make an appearance here. This game was already kind of over as you can see a 6k gold lead um for them but that rumble ulti was nasty but this this flash q out of kyria the individual mechanics going on here then he pops the ulti to get down the turret even gets another q onto fudge to secure it, it just the individual mechanics from kyria alone here worthy of being on this list then you can include owner watch the jarvan buffering this Oriana Shockwave. So throw Owner in here as an honorable shout out for this play. But ah, uh, Kyria, just this was when you had the semblance of, oh gosh, T1 might be a little bit terrifying because if Kyria is playing at this level, he even sidesteps Blabber's knockup on the Belveth as well. So you can't even keep up with how many disgusting outplays in a single play that Kyria was putting up on that bard and obviously set the precedent for the rest of the tournament that this dude is going to shape the meta, be one of the most terrifying support players to match up against, and you're going to have to be picking away some of his power picks, even if you might not really know how to play or pilot those ones. You're better off having a subpar bard performance than letting Kyria absolutely cook on it. At least that's what other teams were thinking. Was that the best option? Maybe not. Was there a better option? 
Not that I could see, because T1 in the draft phase was just an absolute war machine. There was no way you were going to be able to take away the majority of the picks that they were popping off on. Top three. T1 plays at Worlds now. These are the most iconic of the iconic. Some of them were. Now we're kind of including, uh, you know, what the stakes, how high the stakes were in terms of the individual games. And that's why uh, most of them from finals slash semifinals. Now, in hindsight, I feel comfortable saying that JDG versus T1 was the real finals. Number one, it was the most competitive uh, that T1 played because they kind of dumpstered all their other LPL matchups. And number two, pretty confident that JDG would have beaten Weibo, would have beaten Weibo in the finals, even though Weibo was 2 0 against them in the, you know, the year of the LPL. Even if BLG or Gen G had won. I felt confident in JDG against any of them. So the fact that T1 took them down, it does feel like that was the real finals, especially when you have your boy owner making plays like this in game three, which are pixel perfect. He has no room to move. He's at half health, flashing over the ash arrow, followed up by what was almost a five-man Renata ulti. And then, of course, the beautiful Emperor shuffle out of the Emperor himself in Faker. These are just... This is T1 down 2.5k gold in that momentum shifting game series decisive uh, third game. It, it felt like they were doing to JDG what JDG did to everyone throughout the year. And that's just winning team fights, winning skirmishes that the team has absolutely no business winning. And that is just... Five players, one brain, everyone being on the same page and having this just absolutely absurdly gifted mechanically roster. And I know, of course, Ruler Knight Kanavi, guys, you can compare mechanically, but the absolute confidence, I think there was a slight combination of JDG, the whole Golden Road thing, feeling that added bit of pressure and T1's confidence just absolutely going through the roof. Not just Guma and Kyria, not just Faker, but all five members in a confidence that, listen, we can beat anyone at this event, except for Genji, apparently. And that was true for all of 2023. But dodge them in semifinals, quarterfinals, no problem. 11-1 and one against the LPL. The confidence only grew and obviously got a little bit um, out of control after that as... We went into that fourth game, and this this play I don't think is getting enough credit in terms of the mega highlight reel that T1 had throughout the event. And this is the insane APM out of Guma. He's not going to stop Ruler. He's going to crush him, and that is exactly what he did with this attack speed Varus. Looking like Ruler on the ash kiting a couple of years ago, but it starts with Faker dodging that engage from Kanavi and then completely embarrassing him with what's basically a solo kill. This is even with Kyria flashing in, trying to get Ruler and dying, not really being able to do anything, but Guma standing tall in that 1v2. I've never seen an Aatrox's health bar drop quicker than that and when you watch it closer look at all these zeri auto attacks he's dodging one two three okay he didn't dodge that one but any one of those two that he dodges hits him he's probably going to die before he gets all that life steal off so absolute master class in kiting and spacing whatever you want to call all the mechanics and that was kind of the i don't think they actually closed it out from there but that was the final nail in the coffin, if you will, in that fourth game before T1 would roll on to those finals. Guma, I think because he got outshined a bit in those grand finals, I mean, Zeus would have outshined anybody at that point, but what a tournament from start to finish for Guma. I'm, I'm confident enough to say the best AD carry run out of an SKT championship, that's including some runs by Bang where he had like a 50 KDA for the majority of the tournaments, but absolutely lethal across the board. The amount of pressure that him and Kyria were putting out in the laning phase, forcing opposing junglers to spend a lot of time in the bot lane and then doing plays like that in team fights where even in a 1v2, he says, I'm the Guma God. I got this. The confidence is fully there. So I think this play deserves all the respect in the world because of the level of competition that he was doing it against Ruler and the state of the game where the stakes were at the absolute highest. Of course, 
the stakes were even a little bit higher. In number one on this list, I think everyone knows what the best play out of T1 was going to be at this event, and that is Faker turning back the clock, getting his revenge for 2017. The reason it's number one, of course, first and foremost, the play is incredible, predicting Ruler's Flash, but this is... They're down 4K in a momentum shifting game three of a best of five. And then you couple in what's going on with the rest of the team where Guma's getting blown up and pops the stopwatch with the Renata ulti so that he just gets the bailout, which is the forgotten about part of this play. Because if he doesn't do that stopwatch, T1 doesn't win the game because it ends up being actually pretty close. There's five or so 10 seconds before all the respawns are coming out of JDG by the time they close the Nexus. If your AD carry isn't alive, whacking on turrets throughout all of that, there's no way that T1 is closing the game in the fashion that they did. So yes, Faker's engage is absolutely incredible. The storylines, the history that he's doing it against Ruler in the mid lane six years after the dynasty was killed, a new dynasty is formed and then you include what Guma's doing on the play, what Kyria does throughout. It's just an absolute chef's kiss of a play from T1. Well deserving of that top spot. I'm sure that engage is going to be played for many, many years to come. Probably be included in the 2024 World's Anthem. I'm sure they're already working on it. They said, God bless T1. We got so much material to use for next year's World Song. Next year's build up. All the teaser videos. We don't have to show Faker crying over and over again. We can show him happy and smiling with the rest of the T1 boys. It didn't start like it, but this ended up being one of the most dominant and impressive runs that we have seen by a team at the World Championship. And that's including some incredibly dominant runs by the SKT of old and even Samsung White. I know the JDG series was a lot more competitive, but JDG is an all-time great team in their own right. Top 10 plays from T1. That's just how damn good they were, but that's it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. Thank you all you beautiful people for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.